The so-called March of Progress illustration, which depicts a stooping chimp-like creature gradually morphing into Homo sapiens, the supposed pinnacle of evolution, highlights the shift in thinking that has occurred in this field of study over the years. Many of the species we thought were transitional stages in this onward march, including Homo erectus, overlapped with each other for hundreds of thousands of years, according to a recent study. Anthropologists currently speculate that the direct ancestors of modern humans were African populations of Homo erectus, rather than Asian populations of the same species, as demonstrated by Java Man. While Erectus was clearly established in Asia by 1.8 million years ago, some evidence suggests that it arrived even earlier. Similar dates have been set for hominid sites in Java, such as Mojokerto and Sanjiran. This renewed wanderlust could have been influenced by a greater reliance on meat for sustenance, because carnivores typically require much larger home ranges than herbivores of comparable size because they have fewer total calories available per unit area of territory. According to evolutionary theory, the complexity of the human brain should increase over time, allowing for greater creativity and more effective tools. At all ages and stages of development, humans are toolmakers. Hands, fingernails and teeth were the first weapons discovered. After that, stones, branches retched from trees and fire and flame appeared. Their brains were smaller than those of Neanderthals or Homo sapiens, which was a tactical disadvantage, but they most likely lived life with an animalistic ferocity. Around two million years ago, the first humans left Africa and migrated to other continents. Humans spread rapidly eastward, reaching the Indonesian island of Java and East Asia. Homo erectus is the species of hominids that lived in Asia at this time. Java Homo erectus is one of the earliest known human species, and he walked upright, just like a human, rather than stooping and shambling like an ape. Although there is no archaeological evidence, his well-developed brain and physical abilities suggest that he engaged in symbolic thought, such as figurative art. Indeed, a quantum leap in cognition and technology occurred around 800,000 years ago. Homo erectus pioneered all of the characteristics that define modern humans, including the ability to sprint and run long distances, as well as throw with speed and incredible accuracy. Paleontologists don't claim to know everything about Homo erectus's life, but it's safe to assume that the ancient humans went about their daily lives in unremarkable ways. Their diet, which consisted of foraged fruits and crudely cooked animals, was difficult to force down. If the attachment points on their skulls for strong chewing muscles and their large front teeth are any indication. This early human learned to live in Asia's bamboo forests, and the scarcity of stone tools at Southeast Asian hominid sites suggests that Erectus invented a technology based on bamboo, which is a strong and versatile material. Bamboo could have been used to make rafts, shelters, and household items, such as knives. They could have used bamboo to make spears for hunting, and poles to knock animals off tall trees. In fact, Homo erectus coexisted in these bamboo forests with pigs, stegodon elephants, and the world's largest primate, Gigantopithecus, a peaceful vegetarian ape. Gigantopithecus could have been hunted by these early humans in Asia. They would probably not have gone after the big adults, but they could have targeted juveniles. However, Homo erectus was no match for our species Homo sapiens, and the more primitive hominid died out shortly after anatomically modern humans appeared around 200,000 years ago, or so it seemed. In the 1930s, twelve Homo erectus skull caps and two lower leg bones were discovered in a bone bed 20 metres above the Solo River at Nungandong in central Java. In recent decades, researchers have attempted to date the fossils. However, this proved difficult because the surrounding geology is complex and details from the original excavations became muddled. According to a study published in the journal Science, Homo erectus may not have gone quietly into that good night. A small group of hangers-on on the Indonesian island of Java may have lived as recently as 30,000 years ago, thriving in a world that Homo sapiens had long claimed as its own. These dates sparked a lot of controversy. The study, based on a new analysis of fossil sites, caused a stir in the paleontological community. 
Researchers must now explain not only how a single pre-human population could remain frozen in evolutionary amber for so long after its species became extinct elsewhere in the world, but also revisit two of science's most contentious questions. Where did modern humans first emerge on habitable continents, and how did they come to dominate the world? For fossil hunters studying evolution, Java has always been a good place to look. Its equatorial climate supports a diverse range of species, and periodic land bridges have placed it in the heart of the migratory superhighway connecting Asia and Australia, making it an ideal location for research into animal spread. Numerous Homo erectus fossils have been discovered on the island since the 1890s, but scientists were especially intrigued by more than a dozen partial skulls discovered near the villages of Ngandong and Sambung Makan in the 1930s and 1970s. The skulls had unusually large brain cases and were estimated to be 100,000 to 400,000 years old, making them some of the youngest Homo erectus remains ever discovered. These estimates remained valid for more than a generation. However, a team decided to determine the true age of the fossils by measuring radioactive decay in fossils that had absorbed uranium from the surrounding soil. However, the Indonesian University on Java, which is the custodian of the bones, refused to allow chips to be removed from them for dating for fear of damaging them. Instead, the scientific team travelled to Nungandong and Sambong Makan and discovered animal teeth in the same stratum from which the bones were thought to have been extracted, based on the theory that Homo erectus fossils discovered in the same location must have been buried at the same time, and thus be the same age. When they dated the teeth, they were astounded by the results. The animal remains were only 27,000 to 53,000 years old, implying that the hominid skulls were also this age. Finding Homo erectus bones from a time when only Homo sapiens should have existed is akin to discovering a Neanderthal family living 5,000 years ago. As expected, skeptics weighed in as soon as the discovery was announced. These dates must be wrong, said one paleontologist. They just threw the fossils into a machine and outrolled a date. Scientists are concerned that even if hominid skulls and animal teeth ended up in the same location, there is no guarantee they started there. Flooding, for example, could have deposited Homo erectus remains in a younger fossil bed. But the scientists behind these younger dates disagree, claiming that the remains are too well preserved and the fragile structures are mostly intact to have been tossed around in a flood. If the new dates are correct, it is not difficult to understand how the Indonesian Homo erectus group survived for so long. When Java's last land bridge disappeared, the island was hundreds of miles from the Asian mainland. Any population that settled there would have been well protected from intruders. More troubling are the new study's questions about human evolution in general. So, Homo erectus lived longer than we expected. That was an anthropological understatement. Now, researchers have begun new excavations on the terraces beside the Solo River, re-examining the site and its surroundings. According to a more recent study, the ancient relative of modern humans survived until less recently in Southeast Asia. New dating evidence indicates that it survived until just over 100,000 years ago on the Indonesian island of Java, long after he had vanished elsewhere. This means that Homo erectus was still present when our species walked the earth. The results are described in detail in the journal Nature. They have provided a definitive age for the bone bed, ranging from 117,000 to 108,000 years. This occurred during the Eemian interglacial, which lasted from 130,000 to 115,000 years ago. Nevertheless, this is the most recent known record of Homo erectus anywhere in the world, and they have been referred to as a tropical Neanderthal. The terms Neanderthal, Neanderthaloid and Neanderthalian have been used by various researchers to refer to the same group of human specimens. Of great importance is the Solo Homo erectus population, which has been strangely and unfairly neglected. Curiously, the similarities between the Solo skulls of Java and the Omo skulls of Ethiopia were noted in the first report of the discovery of the Omo fossils in 1969. Little research has been done on this subject 
in the last three decades, however, as the focus of human evolution research has been in Africa. This is a very comprehensive study of the depositional context of the famous Ngandong Homo erectus partial skulls and shin bones, and the researcher built a strong case that these individuals died and were washed into the Solo River deposits about 112,000 years ago. This age is very young for such primitive-looking Homo erectus fossils. The authors claim that this is the last known occurrence of the species, implying that there was no overlap with Homo sapiens in Java, as Homo sapiens arrived much later. Not everyone is convinced about that because other supposedly late Homo erectus material from Javanese sites like Ungawi and Sambung Makan has yet to be properly dated, and they could be even younger. Alternatively, they could correspond with the ages of the Ungandong fossils, but that would be the next step in the investigation. Unfortunately, scientific work suggesting that the Sambung Makan fossils might be younger than those from Ngandong is still unpublished, so scientists can't say anything more about that at the moment. Therefore, there is still potential for a chronological overlap, as there is nothing to indicate that the Ngandong individuals were the last of their species. Some researchers believe the collection of remains represents a mass death event, possibly the result of a lahar upriver. A laha, which comes from a Javanese word, is the slurry that can flow down the slope of a volcano when heavy rainfall occurs during or after a volcanic eruption. These violent events sweep away anything in their path, but if this is the case, some of the skulls would be from women and children rather than only young, healthy males. In fact, archaeologists interpreted two skulls as victims of an unsuccessful assault and the other skulls as victims of headhunting. Archaeologists suggest that only skull caps exist because Solo Man was modifying skulls into skull cups. They were unsure whether this was done by a neighboring Solo River tribe or more advanced human beings who would have given evidence of their superior culture by slaying their more primitive fellow man. Cannibalism and ritual headhunting have been proposed for the sites based on the conspicuous lack of any remains other than the skull cap. This has been reinforced by the historic practice of headhunting and cannibalism in some modern Indonesian and Papuan tribes, which were once believed to have descended from these populations. Many later researchers agree with this interpretation of the site. The Solo Homo erectus were victims of cannibalism. A vast number of different bones of all the animal types were unearthed, but of human remains only a very particular selection whose incidence was certainly not natural. All of the skulls had their faces smashed, and all but two had their bottoms broken open. Archaeologists refer to them as skull trophies, and compare them to the practice of modern headhunters who eat the brains of defeated foes to gain the wisdom and skill of the defeated foe. The human skulls must have been left behind, either intentionally or unintentionally. Perhaps the horde was taken aback and fled, or perhaps the skulls were placed to mark off the area. It appears that even until recently, various tribes in New Guinea demarcate their dwelling or hunting grounds in a similar manner, clearly believing that the spirit dwelling in the skull can help them defend a specific area against invaders. It appears that various tribes in New Guinea demarcated their dwelling or hunting grounds in a similar manner. They evidently believe that the spirit within the skull can assist them in defending a specific area from invaders. But why did Homo erectus survive so late on Java? In Africa, the species was probably gone by 500,000 years ago. In China, it vanished around 400,000 years ago. The species was most likely outcompeted by other human species elsewhere, but Java's location allowed it to thrive in isolation. However, the results show that the fossils came from a period when environmental conditions on Java were changing. What were once open woodlands were transforming into rainforest, which could mark the exact point of Homo erectus extinction on the island. After this period, no Homo erectus fossils are discovered, and there is a period of no human activity until Homo sapiens appear on Java around 39,000 years ago. It's possible that Homo erectus was too reliant on the open savanna and too rigid to adapt to life in a rainforest. Homo sapiens is the only hominin species that lives in a tropical forest, owing to its cultural characteristics, which include the ability to create all of these specialized tools. 
Once this rainforest flora and fauna spread across Java, Erectus would be extinct because Homo erectus was a specialist in woodland savanna. The extinct Javanese tiger, Malayan tapir, hippo, sambar deer, water buffalo, pigs, and crab-eating macaque are among the species found in the Ngandong fauna, which is generally similar to the older fauna, from 800,000 to 700,000 years ago, when large mammal species such as Asian elephants and stegodon migrated to Java in large numbers. These are consistent with an open woodland environment. The presence of the common crane in a nearby site could indicate much cooler conditions than today. The driest conditions probably corresponded to the glacial maximum around 135,000 years ago when the Sunda Shelf was exposed and the major Indonesian islands were connected to the continent. There may have been a sizable population of Homo erectus before the large volcanic eruption that resulted in their interment, judging by the sheer number of specimens deposited at Nungandong at the same time, but population is difficult to estimate with certainty. The Nungandong site was some distance from the island's northern coast, but it is unclear where the southern shoreline and the mouth of the Solo River would have been. By 125,000 years ago, the climate became much wetter, making Java an island and allowing for the expansion of tropical rainforests. This caused the succession of the older fauna by the fauna which represents the modern-day animal assemblage of Java, though more typical fauna, namely orangutans and gibbons, probably could not penetrate the island until it was reconnected to the Asian continent after 80,000 years ago, around the same time that modern humans arrive in the region. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Please share, comment, and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you, and take care.